Hello and welcome to uh, another class in construction equipment and today we're going to be talking about tractors and dozers we're going to learn about what the, their properties are what are they primarily used for and then we're going to learn about how to calculate the production rate for these different pieces of equipment so first of all what are tractors and dozers a tractor is a self-propelled machine used to pull a load or attachment or push a load with a front mounted blade so it's a machine that has a blade in front of it used primarily to push a load and it can either be track mounted like crawler tractors or on wheels each one of them has its specific uses tractors with front mounted blades are referred to as dozers like in bull bulldozers for example they are quite versatile machines so what are they used for they can be used to perform many earth moving tasks primarily earth moving tasks including backfilling trenches after excavation is done through the excavators that we learned about in the previous lecture we can backfill by pushing the soil back in the trench through uh, the dozer clearing and grubbing it can also be used to clear the site if we have some rocks or some trees or debris it can push that debris aside to clear the site creating stockpiles if we want to stockpile the soil that has been excavated in one area for a while until it's ready for backfilling again then the dozers can be used for that excavating although that's not the primary use for the bulldozers but as we learned last time if they are available they can be used for that purpose pushing loading scrapers as we're going to learn in future lectures when we talk about scrapers uh, there are cell, the, some self-propelled scrapers that have their own engines and there are some scrapers that need to be pushed even sometimes when they are self-propelled with a very big uh, bucket then in this case they need to be pushed to be able to start moving ripping compacted soils or soft soft rock we're going to see that one of the attachment that can be added to dozers are rippers that can loosen the soil or break soft rock shaping slopes through some of the motion and tilting of the blades as we're going to see again in this lecture you can shape slopes and finally spreading material if you want to elevate the level of the site by adding topsoil you can spread that material using a dozer as well now the decision to use uh, tracks or wheels for the dozers depend on the use and the availability so crawler tractors must be transported to sites whereas wheel tractors can be give, uh, driven from one site to another of course you cannot drive the crawler tractors on public highways they're going to rip the asphalt or the concrete so they have to be transported on a flatbed um, the crawler tractors are operated at slow speeds six to seven miles per hour and they possess low ground pressure and they have high traction so they're not designed to to be uh, operating at high speeds whereas the wheel tractors are operated at high speeds up to 30 miles per hour but they exert more ground pressure and lower traction imagine if you're using that heavy equipment on a muddy soil then in this case maybe a crawler tractor is going to be better because it's going to distribute the weight of the tractor on the tracks which is going to be a line load whereas in case of a wheel tractor is going to be a point load concentrated load under the tires of that tractor tractors are not cost effective if distance to move material is greater than 100 yards so if that's the condition or if that's if that's the case we're going to look at some other piece of equipment to do that task site working conditions and scope of work determine specific size and type of tractors to use this is some uh, part of your job as a project manager either to improve the job conditions or the site conditions or to look for another piece of equipment to perform the job larger tractors are more productive than smaller ones but cost more per hour to own, lease, and operate. So we're always going to have that trade-off between higher production and higher cost or lower production and lower cost. So there's a trade-off between the cost and the production in this case. We're going to now start talking about the different attachments, different kinds of blades that can be attached to the dozers. And here, for example, we can see a full-grown person about six foot tall standing in front of a blade. As you can see that blade is almost about 20 foot wide and about 7 feet tall and uh, this is quite normal on especially in in mines and uh, quarries and so on pushing heavy loads in front of it 
Another type is uh, special clearing blades, which are primarily used for land clearing. Uh, land clearing, so it's gonna scrape the top soil and remove any debris or any obstacles, and then push it in front of it. As we mentioned at the beginning of this lecture, dozers can also be used to push scrapers. So here we have a scraper with a big bucket, and then we're gonna push it through a, a, a dozer to assist it in its motion. And another example here, we have the ripper as an attachment that's going to be used to rip the soil, whether it's tough, hard clay or soft rock. And now we, we're going to learn about the different types of motion for the blade. If this is the bulldozer and in front of it there's a blade, the blade can move this way, which is called tilting, which is a vertical movement of the, of the blade in that vertical uh, level or plane. It's useful in cutting ditches, breaking up soils in tough crust, and permits concentration of the tractor driving power on a limited length of the blade. So you can tilt the blade and a small part of it is going to be in contact with the soil and then with the heavy power of that uh, dozer is going to be pushing on that tiny portion of the soil so it's going to create a very high uh, level of power at that small point of contact. Another, so this is the first motion is called tilting. The second type of motion is called pitching. Again, here's the dozer and here's the blade in front of it. The pitching is rotating the blade in that direction. That pivotal movement allows the operator to vary the, to vary the angle of attack of the blade, cutting edge with the ground. And the pivotal movement of the blade top towards, towards or away from the tractor. It increases or decreases the blade penetration by varying that angle. So that's the second kind of motion, which is called pitching. The, th the third one is the angling. Whereas, again, here's the dozer, here's the blade. It's going to rotate in this way. So if you want to push the soil aside and the dozer is moving forward, you tilt, you angle the blade this way, so it's going to be pushing the soil sideways to create a clear path in front of the dozer. So the blade is not perpendicular to the direction of travel. It causes pushed material to roll off the trailing end of the blades. Now, some of the blades can perform all three motions. Some of them cannot. They're going to be limited to maybe tilting only or tilting and pitching or pitching and angling or, as I said, all three of them. So looking at the types of blades, we have four major types of blades. The straight blade, something like this, which is primarily used for excavation work normally heavy duty and it can be tilted it can be tilted it's good for penetration of hard materials and may be equipped to pitch as well the second one is the angle blade it can be operated straight or angled up to 25 degrees left or right of normal the blade can be tilted so it can be angled and it can be tilted but not pitched it's designed for side casting material. The third one is the universal blade. As you can see, it has wings on the sides that are canted to, uh, forward about 25 degrees and it's efficient for moving big loads over long distances and it's used for working stockpiles. The fourth one is the cushion blade and that's quite flat as you can see and it's going to be used for pushing scrapers. So that's going to be the point of contact between the front of the dozer and the back of the scraper. Now to measure the production rate of the scraper, we're going to use the generic equation, which consists of two parts, two main parts. The first part is the cycle time, what's, how long is each cycle, and the second one is the number of cycles per hour, how many cycles can we perform per hour and that's going to be measured in loose cubic yards per hour. Contrary to the other equipment that we have used so far, where we used to measure in bank cubic yards per hour, the soil is in, in this case has already been uh, loosened. That's why it's going to be measured in loose cubic yards per hour. And this is going to be dependent on the size and configuration of the blade based on the four types that we just discussed. The size of the tractor, the engine power of the tractor, and how heavy can that load be to push in front of it. Distance the material is to be moved, so again, depending on how far do we need to push the material. Type and condition of material to be moved, is it, is it loose, is it in big chunks? 
and the working conditions is the site flat is it rolling terrain is it muddy does it have a lot of debris and obstacles and things of that sort so the production in loose cubic yards per hour is estimated by estimating the volume of earth that can be moved by the tractor during each operating cycle the volume per cycle and estimating the number of operating cycles that can be completed during an operating hour which is cycles per hour the volume of earth moved is dependent on the type of soil again the more resistance you have to moving that soil the less number of cycles that you're going to have because the, lo the longer the cycle is going to be therefore the less production are you going to get out of that piece of equipment first of all to measure the volume per cycle we have an equation here which is equal to 0 0.375 times W times H times L that 0 0.375 is a constant so remember that this is a constant number W is the width of that stockpile now we're looking from the top of the scrape of, of uh, the dozer L is the length of the blade W is the width of the stockpile it's going to be measured at two different points W1 and W2 and we're going to get an average of the two and H is going to be the height now we're looking from the front of the dozer uh, H is going to be the height of that stockpile is going to be also measured at two different points and we're going to get an average H1 plus H2 over 2 so the equation is going to be 0.375 WHL that's going to be the volume per cycle so the next step is to determine the cycles per hour and the cycle time is going to be the dependent on uh, three different factors FT, HT and RT think about the cycle this way first the equipment positions itself maneuvers to get in front of the stockpile and then it's going to push the load which is called the hauling cycle and then after it reaches its final destination it's going to go back empty to start another cycle so that's going to be called the return cycle so these three components the fixed time the haul time and the return time are going to be the sum of these is going to be the cycle time for the dozer now the fixed time is going to be assumed to be 0.05 minutes which is three seconds for power shift transmission and up to six seconds 0.1 minutes for direct drive transmission which is a property of the equipment itself so this information is going to be given to you based on the type and model of the equipment and you will have to determine whether the fixed time is going to be three or six seconds the productivity finally is going to be basically the load volume which is the volume per cycle divided by the cycle time which is how many cycles per hour uh, the, the cycle time how many seconds per cycle times the efficiency so the efficiency basically is uh, how many productive minutes can we get out of every hour whether it's going to be 45 minutes or it's going to be 50 minutes an hour that's going to vary with the conditions that we have so this is primarily uh, some information about dozers and how to measure their production and so on and so forth and this is the end of this lecture primarily but we have not addressed some of the details which we're going to address in another lecture which are based on what kind of resistance can this equipment face in its uh, operation so for example if you're moving uphill there's going to be a certain ki kind of resistance different from moving downhill downhill you're going to have gravity assisting you whereas if you're moving uphill it's going to be working in, adv in an adverse way against you so we need to learn about the different types of resistance what if your, your tires for example are not properly inflated or what if the tires penetrate through the soil through muddy soil that's going to again slow down the operation so we're going to learn about what's called rolling resistance as well and we're going to learn about grade resistance which is the slope of uh, the road on which you're traveling we're also going to learn about the power of the engine and what's the uh, useful part of that power how to measure it whether it's on wheels or on tracks to give you an example if you're driving your car in winter uh, uphill on a road that has uh, ice or has snow you might find that the tires are rotating but the car is not moving mm -hmm. because the engine cannot push the car up that slope or because there's enough there's not enough friction between the car and the road one of the solutions is to put sand on on the ground that's going to create more friction enabling the car to move or if your car is a rear-wheel drive 
you're going to put a heavy load in the trunk of your car which creates a heavy load on the drivers which are the rotating tires the rear wheel uh, of, of the car and that's going to enable the car to move so things like that we're going to learn about them in our next lecture and this is basically the end of this lecture I'll see you in the next lecture